Okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to my hometown. Mm -hmm. So last year, I, I did start this meeting myself with friends, uh, with my friends from Quovis and all the sponsors. And I'm really happy to see that this event is, <laughs> is working organically and taking its own life. Uh, just wanted to say that uh, my name is Victor Pascual. I've been involved in WAPRTC uh, from the very early days since we started the, the initial BOF meeting at the ITF and then uh, doing some backend work with Google, Ericsson, and, and some other companies on that. And I was invited today to just provide a very quick, like 10 minutes or 15 minutes, standards overview. So you will have to suffer across this before going to the, to the peers. So uh, there is a good sentence that I always like reminding myself when I talk about standards, is that, that the good thing about the standards is that there are so many that you can choose from. So this is uh, one of the beauty of the, of the standards. Oh, well, this is the typical joke about the standardization. Disclosure, I do work for Oracle, but all the nonsense and stupid things I say today are just my own fault, nothing to do with my, my company. And um, yeah, who is uh, somehow related to what part standardization or know uh, what's going on where? So basically, there are a number of players which are involved in the, in the WebRTC scene. Some are providing value, some others just want to be part of the picture, just to get some press releases. So hopefully today we will have some consistent discussion. So basically the, the two organizations which are developing the core work on WebRTC are the ITF, which is the Internet Engineering Task Force, and the W3C. So today I'm gonna go uh, in a deeper detail on the ITF, as we have here Dominic who's working on the on W3C, so basically he will provide very good insight on, on the APIs that, that W3C is developing. Then we have those guys that are taking the technology that the ITF and the W3C are producing and are trying to incorporate this technology into the, their existing architectures, and this is what the 3GPP is doing. So we'll go over what 3GPP is also doing on that. And then we have a number of organizations which are uh, also doing some, some uh, activities around WebRTC. There is something I would like to highlight, which is the GSMA, and here we, we are happy to have today each one. And these guys are spending a lot of time trying to understand what is the role of this technology in the service provider space, and how to monetize this, and what is the value uh, operators can get from that. And basically, I'm sure that each one will be able to, to share today very good information on, on that aspect. So when it comes to the W3C, I say I mentioned Dominic uh, will take care of, of this. So basically they are working on the peer connection API, the data channel, and the get user media. There are some discussions about ORTC, uh, whether they should be depending on SDP uh, offer answer or not. Dominic, I'm sure he, he will provide a very good explanation on that. But basically the W3C is defining the APIs that web browsers are implementing and exposing them uh, to JavaScript developers, and so they can get access to the, all the WebRTC capabilities. Then we have the ITF, which basically means flying somewhere an entire week, drinking a lot of coffee, uh, having some very strange discussions, and then uh, not getting any consensus, and then having to do some mailing list discussions afterwards. <laughs> this is basically my experience with ITF, where basically uh, at the ITF, the, the work we have been doing is defining the protocol stack for WebRTC. So the W3C, as I mentioned, they define the APIs that the web developers that they have, in some cases, no clue about uh, real-time communication. So basically, there are a number of APIs. They are producing applications. And this is all, all the magic which is happening underneath the, the APIs in terms of uh, get me this codec or open this port for sending encrypted media, et cetera. So basically, what the ITF is defining is which are the codecs we are using, how, uh, how is the encryption working on, on the audio and video plane? How is the key exchange mechanism for, for doing this in a secure manner? What are the security threats for that? What is the forward error corrections that we should be using for WebRTC, et cetera? And if you guys go to the ITF website for, for uh, WebRTC, which is called RTC Web, you will see that there are a number of uh, internet drafts which uh, have been already uh, discussed for, for a while. So here, uh, <coughs> There are a couple of documents which have been already published as RFC. So basically at the ITF what you do is you, you, you write an internet draft, which is uh, this strange ASCII document with strange diagrams. This, this document is, is, is discussed, and then if there is agreement in the working group, it gets adopted by the working group. This is the usual, the usual path. And then when it gets adopted to the, to the working group, then it finally gets published as an RFC. So, so far, 
we have uh, published as an RFC the use cases and requirements for, for WebRTC. This is basically the, one of the very initial documents where we were discussing, okay, so this is WebRTC thing, what is this really about, right? Then uh, there is also uh, an, an RFC published on the stand constant freshness. Basically, this is about uh, how the stand traffic can be sent or not based on the authorization, et cetera. And then there are a number of documents which are, here you can see the RFC editor's queue. These are documents which we already have agreement. That, okay, so this is ready to go. And now we need to follow like a process before it gets published officially as an RFC. So here you can see uh, basically the two specifications about the data channel. So WebRTC is not only about uh, voice and, and video. We also have a peer-to-peer -peer capability, which is a data channel, which runs over SCTP, DTLS. We, we don't need to, to go into details, but basically here is where you see the, the details for, for this protocol. We have uh, another document, which is how you use RTP here. So you guys, most of you are operating SIP-based uh, SIP networks, and you are using RTP. So here we are defining, okay, what is this profile that for RTP that we should be using? Is it uh, using also RTCP feedback? Should it be uh, also encrypted? Shall we multiplex that into the same port? Uh, shall we use different ports? So this is where we are, we are defining that. And then it's also the video document, which is basically defining which are the video codecs that web RTC should be using. If you have been following the, the discussion, we had lots of, lots of discussions around, okay, so whether we should be using VP8 or H264, when at the end of the day, uh, I like to explain this that some, layer, some lawyers started coming to the ITF and then we realized it was not a te technical discussion anymore. So it was such as a royalties discussion. We had some battles back and forth and then the, the final conclusion was that both BP8 and H264 should be supporting for, for WebRTC. But my personal feeling is that, well, this is just a starting battle because now we need to, to discuss about H265 and BP9 and what's gonna happen beyond that. So basically it's just the starting point. Then there are some other documents uh, which are in the IIG processing, which means the kind of the clever guys of the ITF are reviewing before approving these documents to be published as, a, as an RFC. First of all, we have the RTC web audio. Basically here we're defining the mandatory to implement audio codecs for WebRTC. The agreement is to use 711 and Opus. Uh, we decided to do 711 for backward compatibilities, but in most of the cases you, you are seeing in, in deployments uh, Opus being used. But then uh, some folks from the telco industry uh, being uh, led by Orange France Telecom, they did publish also a document which is basically defining what are the, okay, so we are using 7.11 and Opus, but are there any other codecs which might be relevant for some scenarios like mobile networks or access to IMS networks, et cetera, that might provide kind of recommendations to implement other codecs beyond that, like 7.22 or some other codecs which are being used in, in, in mobile networks, so basically, the RTC web audio is defining what's mandatory to implement, and the audio codecs for interop are defining, okay, so these are the recommendations that you might want to implement <coughs> this if you need to interop with uh, some other domains and you don't want to do uh, transcode. There are also a couple of documents uh, right by KR on security, basically analyzing the security threats for WebRTC, what is the architecture, the identity provider uh, role in the architecture, et cetera. And then there are some other active drafts, which basically are the ones which are having more discussion. Some are more major than, than others. <coughs> so at the top we have the ALPN, which basically is a mechanism for letting know a middle box, like could be an HTTP proxy or a firewall, saying, hey, this is gonna be a WebRTC call. Uh, please let my media go through. This is not working yet in the real world, so this is something we are we're working on. But uh, there are some other mechanisms today being deployed for, for this. Uh, there are some other, uh, Documents are finding the constraints. This is the interaction <coughs> with the uh, Get User Media API. Uh, there is an overview document. But basically, I wanted to here provide uh, an overview. Of, uh, these are the core documents from the ITF perspective. And I is there anything here that you guys are missing? So all, all I have explained here has to do with media, right? Nothing to do with, with signaling. Here we have discussed about the codecs, the, the keys, etc., but nothing to do with, with signaling. And the point here is that WebRTC does not define signaling. It does define how the signaling layer should be interacting. This is the reaction from some of our customers when we tell them. So th th we define in the JSEP how the signaling plane should be interacting with the, with the APIs, et cetera. But for WebRTC, you can use HTTP, you can use SIP, you can use XMTP, whatever protocol you might want to, to use for that. This is what it comes from the ITF. So basically what I wanted to point out is that W3C, Dominic, they are defining what are the APIs that web developers are using. 
the ITF is defining the media profile. This doesn't need to be a browser. Could be a mobile application. Could be a fax if you want to call it. So this is basically a media profile that any device, preferably a browser, should be implementing in order to be WebRTC compliant. And then we have the interaction with the signaling server and then and some other peers, which is not defined. So basically you can take whatever you feel comfortable with. There are some standardized uh, mechanisms like SIP web sockets or XMPP web sockets, uh, but we are, for instance, at Oracle doing JSON, so it, it really depends on, on what's the scenario you, you might be using. And then, uh, finally, to I think that I'm running out of time, uh, the 3GPP, which is basically uh, the group that created IMS. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with IMS, but this is the foundation for faulty uh, voice over Wi-Fi and other solutions. This is really, really complex if you really want to go the 3 tpp path. Uh, fortunately, some in the industry have simplified this to, to make it work. And basically, if you take a look at the IMS architecture with support for WebRTC, there isn't anything really, really new. So basically, we had in the past something called the PCSCF, which is basically the signaling server. Now, in, in order to include WebRTC support, we just put an E in front of that, and this is enhanced PCSCF. Done. We had in the past something called the IMS Access Gateway. Basically, this is the media, the media node for, 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 for IMS. We, we put there yet another E in front of that, doing all the, all the functions for like TTL SSRTP termination, trans transcoding, et cetera. So here, this is how it fits into the architecture. And then there are new components. So for instance, uh, you can see on top the w, WSF, which is basically the web server that you are using. And there are other uh, components in, in the backend, like the WAF, the WebRTC uh, uh, authentication function, which basically guys from Quobis are, are implementing, which basically is providing interaction from what's happening in the access network and what you guys have in the core IMS network, like in the HHS, HSS, HLRs, et cetera. And this is pretty much from the ITF and 3 gpp perspective. I hand over to Dominic. I'm sure you will provide insight on the WTC. Thank you. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Dominic Azal Massieu. I work for WCC, the World Wide Web Consortium. And uh, in WCC, I'm in particular responsible for getting the WebRTC APIs to standardization, which hopefully will happen at some point. Um, so you can reach me at uh, dom at wc.org. You can follow me on Twitter as uh, don't call me dom. And uh, <laughs> A very quick introduction of what WCC is. So WCC is a consortium. We are a membership-based organization. We have uh, more than 400 members from a big uh, set of the industry, both big and small players. We have obviously all the big names, uh, Google, Mozilla, Apple, Microsoft, and so on. But we also have plenty of smaller enterprises. Everybody in WCC has uh, the same rights, so that's uh, a fairly empowering uh, organization. WCC was founded by Tim Berners-Lee, who I hope most of you know, uh, created the web some uh, 26 years ago. Uh, WCC works mostly with contribution from its members, but it's also animated by a staff of some uh, 80 persons from which I'm uh, a member of. So we have offices in Europe, US, and uh, Asia. Um, so WCC is uh, the organization that creates and develops standards for the web. So I'm sure you've heard about HTML5, uh, CSS, a uh, lot of JavaScript APIs. Uh, some of the specificities of WCC in the standardization space is that we ensure that all the standards we bring to the web are royalty free. What that means is that if you create a browser, if you create a web application, you don't have to pay anything to anyone, and I can tell you it's not always very easy to keep that commitment, but we do our best. Um, so my particular job in WCC is to ensure that, as I said, uh, WebRTC, the API, as Victor uh, described, the ITF deals with the protocols, and uh, WCC deals with the JavaScript APIs in browsers. So my job is to make sure that at some point these APIs stop uh, changing all the time. Sure, some of you have had to deal with some of the uh, rapid change in the APIs you found in implementations, and I'm partly to blame for that, so sorry. <laughs> um, so I wanted tonight to 
review some of the APIs that uh, WCC has been working on just to give you an update on where they are in terms of app development and also maybe to inform you about what's upcoming in this space that might be of interest to you. So obviously the first thing you need if you want to establish uh, uh, video audio communication is access to the microphone and uh, camera. So that's a get user media API for those of you that are a developer. I'm knocking wood, it should get to candidate recommendation very soon. What candidate recommendation means is that we basically are not going to change anything to it. Uh, we just have a couple of issues to close, but that's